सुमादी मैडम सुमादी मैडम तंजा और शर्मा हाँ गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग मैडम गुड इवनिंग सर हाँ उनको मीटिंग इधर आ रेडी बंटिंग ला हाँ एल्ला मुड़ने चाहिए सर और इन्विटेशन प्रिपेयर बनिए अंचर में हाँ आधुनिक अंस्टन सर अंस्टिंग ला हाँ मंग सर रामदास सर के थैंक यू थैंक यू सुरक्षा सर नालार का सर रोम्बा एल्ला � இன்னமும் அப்படியே ஸ்டூடண்ட் மாதிரியே இருக்கீங்க சார் நான் சோக்மார் சாரோட ஸ்டூடண்ட் சார் சுமதி सपोज டு பீ மை ஸ்டூடண்ட் சார் ஸ்பீக்கர் உங்க ஸ்டூடண்ட் தானே இப்போ ஆமா ஸ்பீக்கரோட நம்ம ஸ்டூடண்ட் நிறைய ஸ்டூடண்ட் உருவாக்கி இருக்கார் சார் ஸ்டூடண்ட்ஸ் வரவங்கள அவர் எங்க ஆயிட்டார் ஆ கண்டிப்பா சார் சச்ச எனர்ஜி पर्सन சார் சுறுசுறுப்பா இருப்பார் Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. I will start that yes, meeting. Sir. Good evening, everybody. On behalf of uh, Institution of Engineers, Tamil Nadu State Center and uh, Madurai Local Center, today <coughs> the Madurai Local Center we are uh, celebrating. They are celebrating 40th year anniversary. Based on the 40th year anniversary, they decide uh, mm -hmm. each every day uh, one on uh, local center will giving that uh, arranging the speaker and then give the technical lecture. Yesterday, Coimbatore and uh, Erod Local Centre given that uh, excellent uh, uh, technical lecture on uh, 3D printing and uh, electrical storing of energy systems. And now today, uh, Trichy Local Centre uh, regularly doing that uh, Tuesday uh, technical lecture meeting. Today, the uh, <coughs> Trichy Local Centre arranged that uh, today is a speaker. Now I owe to the Rajagopal sir, uh, chairman of Madurai Local Center, will give, give the uh, welcome address today. Thank you, Ramdas. This is uh, today is the third day of our 10-year long party uh, anniversary program. As uh, suggested by Ramdas, we had a very good lecture yesterday. Today the lecture will be superconductor based power cable. Future of Indian Power Grid by Dr. Abhay Singh Gaur. Today's host is uh, Trichy Local Center. We have to thank the Trichy Local Center for the excellent uh, program arranged for today. Uh, thank you very much. I welcome you all for this uh, web, uh, web meeting. So now, Trichy Local Center, uh, sir, uh, Kumarajan yeah. sir, introduce yeah. the speaker today. Yeah. Good evening to all of you. As we all know, that the Institution of Engineers India is a statutory body and supporting for nation building with its relentless service to promote and advance the engineering and technology for more than nine decades in our country. Hence, it's a pride to be associated with Institution of Engineers India. Institution of Engineers Tiruchirappalli Local Centre is one of the vibrant centres and organises several events for the benefit of fellow engineers associated with IEI. and other professional bodies similarly institution of engineers madurai local center is also contributing a lot to the engineering community and now it is celebrating its 40th year at this juncture as a chairman of institution of engineers tiruchirappalli local center i express my sincere gratitude to each and every one of the past and the present executive committee members chairpersons and sec secretaries for their unstinted support for the growth of institution of engineer engineers madurai local center in this journey iitlc would like to contribute and partner with institution of engineers madurai local center and the tamil nadu state center and hence today institution of engineers india tiruchirappalli local center jointly celebrates with iai madurai local center and as part of this celebrations we have arranged a technical talk on superconductor based power cable future of indian power grid amidst us dr abhay singh kar associate assistant professor cryogenic engineering center indian institute of technology karakpur west bengal joined to deliver this talk when we approached him for delivering this talk 
Dr. Abhay Singh uh, accepted our invitation gracefully. And thank you so much, uh, Dr. Abhay, for your support and participations. Once again, our heartfelt congratulations to Institution of Engineers Madurai Local Center for the journey. And I wish for the continued successful endeavor in the coming years. Thank you all. Now over to Engineer Anand to introduce the speaker. Thank you, sir. Uh, on this special occasion, behalf of IETLC and my own behalf of I convey my RTS congratulation to Madurai Local Center and its uh, chairman, secretary, committee members, and other senior members for their uh, 40th anniversary celebration. Uh, now, on behalf of IETLC, I welcome uh, Dr. Abhay Singh Gau for uh, this lecture program. Uh, so Abhay Singh Gau is uh, completed his B in electrical and electronics engineering in uh, 2001 to 2005 in Rajiv Gandhi, Proyakil, Vishwa, Vishwalaya, Bhopal, India. And after that, he worked as a maintenance engineer in Ranboxy Laboratories Limited, uh, Devas, India. And after that, uh, he completed his M.Tech in uh, Process Control and in Instrumentation in uh, National Institution of uh, Technology, Tirichirapalli, from uh, 2006 to 2008. After that, he worked as a management staff in ABB Global Industries and Service Limited, Bangalore. After that, he got PhD in um, Instrumentation and Applied Physics uh, in uh, IIT in Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, in 2009 to 2016. After that, uh, he worked as a... Post, uh, he, uh, he completed his postdoctoral fellowship uh, in uh, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, from October 2016 to February 2017. After that, he has worked as a. Uh, he also come. Uh, he did his uh, postdoctoral fellowship in uh, Indian Institute of uh, Technology, Karakpur, from February 2017 to May 2008. From May 2008 to till date, he worked as uh, assistant professor, grade one in the Cryogenic Engineering Center, Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur. Uh, he got uh, one pattern in multi-layer planner inductor based proximity sensor and associated uh, electronics operating down to liquid helium temperature and uh, he got uh, uh, yeah, he is a member of uh, IEEE, member of uh, Indian Cryogenic Council and a reviewer panel of uh, International uh, Cryogenic Engineering Conference and reviewer panel of uh, IEEE, IAS Electro Electronic Machines Committee. And he is editorial board member of the Journal of Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence. And he has a vast experience in his research. And the research topic is uh, uh, design and development integration testing of permanent magnet based linear actuator pulse uh, with the modulated power supply, twin pulse tube cryo cooler, ITC superconductor based level sensor for locks recondenser. With this brief introduction, I request our uh, today's speaker to take over this session. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for the, the wonderful uh, uh, introduction. Uh, now, uh, I would uh, uh, sincerely good evening to everyone. I would like to express my gratitude to all the organization, organizers, especially Professor uh, Shiv Kumar for uh, inviting me to deliver a talk. And uh, today I will be uh, presenting my talk on superconductor based power cable. Superconductor based power cable, the future of uh, uh, Indian power grid. So, uh, most of us uh, are very much familiar with the conventional uh, uh, power systems and uh, we have been uh, looking forward uh, for the uh, day in and day out increasing the efficiency of the, our uh, power grid system. And you also know that uh, there is a continuous increase in demand for which uh, BHEL and other industries are keeping working to make the generators and other things. Power Grid uh, Corporation of India is also playing a vital role in keeping uh, the life status of uh, power supply to all the uh, people around the, across the country. So today's talk is how we can further improve the, the status of our power grid. So one of the approach which we have started is this superconductor cable. So today my talk will consist of 
uh, as introduction to our existing power grid, some history about the superconductivity. Then we will look into what are the technical challenges in uh, making this kind of superconducting devices and what, where, what is the status of India and how far we have taken the India's first superconductor cable. So with this, uh, coming to us this slide, so this is the, our existing power cable in which we have the thermal plant, hydro power plant, nuclear plant, wind power farm, and solar farms. Now all these grid, all these power plants are being integrated with and been stacked up with the help of transformers and been transferred to different uh, load centers. Okay, there can be industrial load, it can be a domestic load, it can be a village load or any other kind of loads. But synchronizing all these things is very difficult job. Now, if you see over here, we have more mainly dependent upon the thermal power plant and next comes our, our idle power plant. Wind farm and the nuclear and the solar are still very less to contribute to India's uh, current production. So if you look towards that, uh, so total tar target for the India as of now is uh, uh, 300 uh, uh, megawatt. Okay, out of which coal is around 205 gigawatts. Hydro is 45 gigawatts. Gas generation is 24.9 gigawatt. Solar is 34 gigawatt. Wind is 37 gigawatt. And nuclear is only 6.7 gigawatt. But if you see out of all this, there's a 21% of loss in the power transmission. So that means one fifth of the power generated through all these sources is just getting lost. And that too into I square R or joule heating. Okay. So if you see that uh, we are losing a tremendous amount of power. So if you see that is 77.72 that is, uh, gigawatt, that is equivalent to 150 uh, generators of 500 megawatts. Okay. So 150 meg, uh, generators power, we are simply losing in terms of I square R to transfer the power. Now, how to reduce uh, this kind of power losses? One of the way to do is to use the superconducting grid system. Now this grid, it will actually also have uh, superconducting power cables, superconductor motors, generators, fault current limiters, and magnetic energy storage systems. So, so what is happening? Uh, we are finding that Indian power system is continuously expanding and it is expected to be 400 gigawatt by the year 2022. But if you see the geography of India, most of the resources uh, where the water as well as the coal is there, that is in, lies in the northern eastern and eastern part of the country. Whereas the load centers are uh, situated in the northern, western and southern part of the country. Now, to, in order to transfer the power from the eastern to the other parts of the country, we need to have a long transmission lines. And that's the reason we, we lose lots of power due to this distance load center. Now, what happens? Another drawback is we have uh, to overcome this. We have put a uh, uh, high voltage line, 760 kV and 765 kilowatt extra high voltage transmission lines to supply gigawatts of power from one end to another. But what happens? to when you put this kind of lines. There's a major problem is the right of way. Right of way is basically the distance occupied or the land occupied by the transmission towers. Okay, it can be a cultivation uh, land, it can be a bare land, or it can be a hilly region. But, so if you can multiply, it's a, almost a, covers around 130 feet or 100 meters. Multiply by the land uh, of cultivating or good land we are wasting in just putting these towers. However, the same power can be transferred with the underground cables. Okay. And these cables are the superconductor cables, which I'm going to discuss it today in more detail. How this is possible that the same gigawatt of power you can transfer? 
So you, if you see, the power consists of two components, voltage and current. Voltage is there, there like your pressure, which is there required to give the head difference so that the current or the electrons can flow from one end to another. Okay. But if this conductor, if I want to pass a thousand amperes, so you need approximately one inch uh, uh, dia uh, copper conductor to pass uh, 1000 amperes through it. Okay. But if the same power I can pass just to, with the help of four mm pipe strips, then I can drastically reduce the losses. How? Because superconductor has two properties. Its resistance is zero when it is cooled. And second is, if you reduce the number of conductors, then your inductance will also decrease. So your R by X ratio of the transmission line will be drastically reduced. So hence, if you see, if the copper conductor can supply is required to transfer the power of this size, the STS conductor required is only this. Okay. Statistically, if you talk about, if you I want to transfer five gigawatt of energy uh, from uh, uh, for different uh, lengths, so we found that around 250 to 280 kilometer there's a crossover where the superconductor uh, losses in the superconductivity line is constant as shown in the green line. Whereas for 765 kilowatt overhead lines, it increases exponentially with the distance. Okay. So this uh, trade-off that is the long distance and high power transmission can be easily met with the help of superconductor cable. Then what is the challenge? So let's look into it. But before that, let's understand what is superconductivity. So what happened is in the year uh, 1908, there's a Dutch professor called Eik Kamerling Ohms. He was the one who liquefied the helium in 1908. So what happened is uh, they take the monazite sand of India, took it to the Dutch country. They, they heated that sand and the helium gas came out. They collected that gas in a gas bank. And then this professor, Kamerling Holmes, he uh, made a setup to liquefy the helium. So in that era, he was the only one person on this planet Earth who had this source of liquid helium. And in that content, he started testing the properties of different materials. He was more interested towards the resistance how the resistance varies for the materials at different temperatures. So after conducting the experiment for continuously two to three years, he found one day suddenly that when he was testing with the mercury, there's a sudden drop in the uh, resistance. Okay. So at uh, 4.2 Kelvin, which is the boiling point of liquid helium, he found there's a sharp drop. All of a sudden, the, his uh, voltmeter is showing a zero value. And the current is full. So that point, he identified that there is a uh, special property of this material. So you can see till 4.5 Kelvin, 4.3 Kelvin, there was certain resistance, and suddenly at 4.2, it has become a zero. So this was the first superconductor which was uh, determined. So similarly, in, uh, uh, in the year 1986, the the two scientists uh, that is the Van Rose and Muller, they got a Nobel, Nobel Prize for uh, identifying the high temperature superconductor. Now, when I say the high temperature superconductor, it's basically 77 Kelvin, which is uh, minus 196 degree centigrade. Okay, so they uh, had, uh, they have found the material, lanthanum barium copper oxide, which uh, had uh, the TC of 30 Kelvin. Okay, and due to that uh, TC, uh, they found that there's a, uh, you don't need a liquid helium to uh, have a superconductor. You can have liquid hydrogen also. So that's the reason the high temperature uh, superconductors were born and they were awarded the Nobel Prize for that. So today, if you see the commercial, uh, whatever is the CERN, LHC magnet or your MRI magnets, uh, you see those are made up of this MBTI LTS magnet. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, niobium tin, uh, uh, niobium tin uh, material which has been filled in the copper bar. Okay, and then when you do the wire drawing, you get a little tin filament. 
you need to understand that uh, although this is a, we call a superconductor, uh, but these are actually at room temperature as ceramics. So they are basically the insulators to the electric electric conductors and back conductor of the heat. And that's why we put uh, them in the copper conductors so that we can have the thermal the good the thermal conductivity. Next, uh, the high temperature superconductor tapes, which are commercially available nowadays, looks like this, in which they are multi-layered. This is uh, done by several uh, type of uh, deposition methods where you have a substrate over that they will be coating. The main superconductor layer is this 1.6 micrometer thick. And that is called the Repco STS material. Okay, so we will discuss this. This is the architecture from the superpower to the STS wire. So if you see the, the timeline of the superconductor from 1900 till date, so we have several uh, materials we have identified. MGB2 is one of the potential is also there. But uh, over the era, we have got one uh, Nobel Prize for LTS, one Nobel Prize for STS, and the next Nobel Prize is expected to be for room temperature superconductor, for which the all over the world, the people are giving fight to identify. Now, superconductor, one property we are, I have already told that it offers zero resistance to the DC current. It's not to the AC current. It offers zero resistance to the DC current when it is below the critical temperature. Okay, another property which defines a material to be a superconductor is that it should exhibit machinery effect. That is a diamagnetic uh, property. So what happens is at uh, when the temperature is greater than the uh, critical temperature, all magnetic lines of forces will pass through the material. But as soon as it has been cooled by the coolant and it, the temperature falls below the TC, what will happen? It will start expelling the magnetic lines of forces. And thus, you can see the levitation. Okay, this uh, happens because the material starts generating a counter current on its surface. That is called the surface current because of which the, the, there will be a counter magnetic flux and it will generate the same pole as to what it has been subjected. And therefore, there will be a force of propulsion which has been encountered by the uh, gravitational force and you can see the levitation in this photograph. Now I would like to demonstrate one short video of my lab where we have dipped the superconductor in liquid nitrogen and this is the magnetic track for the magnetic levitation track. So you can see it is levitating and it's moving friction. So that's uh, frictionless. So it is uh, one of the concepts of how the levitation twins can be operated with the superconductor. Now we have a longer track. So the kinetic energy has been gained by the superconductor and it has been trapped in another magnet like an iron trap and the, you can see it is floating and rotating so the kinetic energy received during its motion is being translated into the rotational motion uh, once it gets trapped so you can have superconductor motors balancing also in this now in ordinary what makes it a material different it's a at room temperature it's a ceramic but when you see at a, a particular temperature it becomes a superconductor so if you see a normal conductor, its domains are misaligned, which offers the resistance to the flow of the electrons. But in superconductor, once it comes down below its critical temperature, the domains are crystal clear aligned, like a glass, transparent glass, and there is no flow of the electrons, but there's a flow of pair of electrons. Two electrons will be moving together. So that's why we call them as a Cooper pair. Okay. Whereas in the conductors, only the electron flows. But in superconductor, it's the pair of the electron which moves together. Because the lattice, or force of attraction between the lattice is much more stronger than the force of repulsion between the two electrons. So it binds the two electrons and pushes them along the length. Okay. And that's a pair of electrons is called a Cooper pair. Any superconductor is defined by the phase diagram. So this is called a superconductor based phase diagram. This superconductor phase diagram has three components. One is TC temperature, GC is the current density, and HC is the magnetic field density. So superconductor starts behaving only when it is these three conditions are being satisfied. Okay, any thing 
it process the region it becomes a insulator it is no more so we define tc as the critical temperature hc as the critical magnetic field and jc as the critical current density now these properties are interesting to make different devices so as we have to speak on uh, spoken about uh, several things so if you see you have uh, the kelvin scale centigrade scale and fahrenheit scale water boils at 373 degree uh, 373 kelvin or 100 degree centigrade and it uh, uh, ice is formed at 0 degree centigrade or 273 kelvin now the nitrogen of the air is liquid uh, fication point is 77 kelvin or minus 193 6 degree centigrade that's where your high temperature superconductor works and your conventional superconductors works on minus 273 degree centigrade or 4 kelvin sort of thing to say minus 269 degree centigrade now coming to the what is happening to the st stables uh, in the real power grid across the world so what we have seen is that uh, usa china uh japan uh, other countries are uh, having different types of plants already been set up they have established 138 kv lines 200 kv lines for transfer uh, 66 kv lines for transferring high power okay as the uh, impedance uh, resistance is zero it is uh, can also be used in the, for the electrolysis processes in the plants you can see over here there are the cooling systems for that so like uh, if you have uh, traveled to the train you will find there are substations after certain interval so similarly for a, a superconductor cable we need to have a substation for cooling it okay you can see this small, small cable can carry up to 200 mv okay and that is 1.74 kilo amperes at 66 kv so this is a sumito move for uh, electrical industries limited so we can in a compact uh, we can make our grid more compact more efficient with more power transmission these are uh, the projects around the world which has there and if you ask me what's the status of india so india has just started okay so at iit kharagpur uh, uh, we have uh, started uh, some certain activities the founder of this group was professor uh, is uh, professor divi rao and uh, i joined him after that uh, so we have some collaborations uh, with the bhn uh, those who are working on the superconductor generators and motors so you can see in yellow and green so it's a combined thing other there are the green stars that is the superconductor cable fault current limiters and uh, your smes superconductor magnetic energy storage system these are the active uh, ongoing uh, activities at iit kharagpur which i am heading now what is uh, how you can classify a superconductor cable superconductor cable can be classified in terms of the type of dielectric you use warm dielectric is something what we regularly use for our uh, uh, existing power cables which is operating at room temperature or under ambient conditions cold dielectrics are something which operate at liquid nitrogen temperature that is minus 196 degree centigrade okay now this dielectrics used to us has certain different uh, properties because of that they are very feasible to use at this low temperatures it can be a single phase cable it can be a three phase cable when you talk about three phase cable it can be a triaxial that means you have uh, three axis uh, you have single cable on a three axis and uh, triad that means you have three cables with different axis so this is the example of triad and this is the example of triaxial so you can see r y b are being mounted on the same axis whereas in triad you have the different axis for r y b okay now what are the challenges over here of this uh, challenges okay so uh, here if you see the design challenges so design of superconducting cable it has electrical problem it has a problem to deal with the thermal now you have both electrical and thermal due to that because the thermal is operating at minus 196 degree centigrade so you 
you need a structural stability. Now, when you have a, such kind of structure, so it has to be a multi-wall because uh, the heat from the ambient should not enter our system. Okay, so uh, it has to be a multi-wall cryostat. Now, when you have a multi-wall cryostat system, the system becomes totally blind. So we need to totally rely on the instrumentation and the process control. Now, when you see well, how do you cool this, we need to use a liquid nitrogen. Name liquid nitrogen or any other cryogen. So uh, liquid nitrogen, when its boiling point is minus 196 degrees centigrade, that means any heat imparted to the liquid nitrogen above minus 196 degrees centigrade, it will turn into gaseous food. So that means you are not going to handle only liquid, you have to handle the gas also. Now, what is the difference? What, what's the problem in that? The problem is once when one spoon of liquid nitrogen gets converted into gas, it becomes the 700 equivalent spoons of gas. That means the pressure will rise 700 times. It means the your structure will collapse, collapse like a bomb. Okay, so we need we are having a challenge of having a high electric, high voltage, and high current. In addition to that, we need a structural stability who can uh, withstand this kind of pressures. At the same time. We also need someone to take care of the heat in leak and monitor all these parameters on this line. At the most, most important is the interference. It should not interfere any other system. So these are the uh, different uh, uh, challenges existing from all different domains of engineering, science, and technology. And fortunately or unfortunately, uh, currently we don't have that many skilled powers who are good in understanding or binding this kind of technologies together. So, okay. So when you see a superconductor power cable, what are its different components? We can look into it. First is the material. For any machine or any device, most important thing is the material. So there are three different types of uh, materials that is, YBCO, Disco, and uh, uh, their Repco. So uh, how to manufacture that? Currently in India, we don't have a single manufacturer who can uh, make uh, the superconductor uh, tapes long for the, in, uh, for the engineering purposes. Okay, everything we are procuring from outside. The cost of each uh, per meter for four mm tape is close to 5,000 rupees. Okay, one meter of YBCO tape of four mm will cost you five thousand rupees. Okay, now how it is there? If you can see, there are different uh, layers deposited on the substrate. So you do the electropulsing, uh, metal oxide, chemical vapor deposition, ion embed system, buffer structuring. So these are the different processes which are being dealt with, and that's why this technology is being very costly. The backbone for all this AI technology is the high vacuum system. That's why in the introduction slide, if you would have uh, seen carefully, I also had the vacuum laboratory uh, or vacuum laboratory systems because that is the core or the crust of dealing any kind of superconductor technology or any kind of semiconductor technology. Another method of using is the uh, plasma laser deposition. So you have the different materials where impart the laser beam on that and deposit all those layers over the substrate. Okay, so that becomes your uh, alternative method of doing so. So you can find, identify that there's no simple way of uh, making it and that's what costs the materials. In fact, uh, some of the materials are very rare, uh, like uh, yttrium and gallium. So these are the rare earth materials which also increases the cost of materials. The BISCO material uh, ranges, if you see, it is uh, basically, uh, you have the material of uh, uh, barium uh, uh, bistable uh, copper oxide. It has been mixed thoroughly with the heat treatment. Then what is there, you have you take the powder and then do the wire drawing. Then you will have multiple filaments, okay. You cut that filaments into small, small filaments and again put in a silver pipe and again do the wire drawing. Repeat this till that 
that you get a very fine uh, conductors and then you roll it with a pressing mill do the heat treatment again press it do the heat treatment and then you will get a thin tape of superconductor so the details of uh, this kind of a uh, uh, manufacturing you can go to this uh, uh, link okay so this is the different steps uh, steps involved uh, for each one of them i will not go through it thank you next is the important aspect is uh, the dielectrics so dielectrics is the one is what we people use at the uh, conventional cables is xlpe that is the cross link polyurethane uh, polyethylene uh, poly but uh, for liquid nitrogen when you want uh, the dielectric to operate at the li liquid nitrogen temperature we need polypropylene laminated paper you might be uh, thinking why i am talking about liquid nit nitrogen always but uh, why not liquid helium liquid uh, helium actually cost 2000 rupees per liter whereas liquid nitrogen just cost 10 rupees per liter so you can see there is almost 200 times the cost difference so hence the operation of the liquid uh, nitrogen is more feasible now in dielectric uh, uh, when you talk about a cold dielectric the cold dielectric material will be directly wound over the former the stack of tapes whereas in the warm dielectric it will be wound outside the cryostat okay so that it is not in exposure to the liquid nitrogen temperature which can deteriorate its performance but in that process what will happen what is the purpose of dielectric dielectric is used to confine the electric fields within the material okay the moment you keep it outside there is always a stray electric field within the cryostat which can always lead to the sparking which can cause a fire inside the cable and any fire inside the cable will cause liquid nitrogen to evaporate which will increase the pressure inside the vessel drastically which will lead to the catastrophic blast so these are the reasons why people or we prefer cold dielectric materials for the uh, superconductor cables now this uh, cable if you see uh, it's a annular piece uh, with a vacuum so this uh, vacuum is used as a thermal insulation so the heat uh, the, does not leak inside from the ambient into the cryostat where the cable is operating so that we can reduce the uh, boil off of the liquid nitrogen this will also have this uh, annular space will also have the radiation shield to avoid any kind of heat inlet to the radiation okay now what is a pplp it's basically a craft paper with a thin layer of polypropylene okay and uh, this uh, craft paper and uh, thickness is 35 microns and uh, that of uh, the polypropylene is 15 microns okay so total is 120 micron uh, thick paper which has to be wrapped around it so if you see uh, if we start so this is the inlet for the liquid uh, nitrogen uh, and then you have a supporting tube because here uh, and then you have the tapes wound over the supporting tubes then you will have a thin layer of semiconducting tape because it's a tube you want to make the electric field uniform around the conductor so semiconducting tube will make it followed by the dielectric material then a cryostat followed by other uh, uh, liquid nitrogen path and the former outer jetting okay so these are the three different con configurations which i have already discussed okay uh, in the triad uh, configuration you can see the liquid nitrogen is flowing through this points to the center of jet and it is getting returned to the outer whereas in the uh, a uh, triaxial it's everything uh, liquid nitrogen flowing to the inner one and flowing it and back to the outer now we have already discussed the what are the different types of uh, cable it's a three phase uh, either you can have single phase cable three times you have a three phase or you can have all the three phases on a single former which is known as triaxial or three different uh, cables put together in a single cryostat which is known as a triad so these are the different configurations and their advantages and disadvantages out of which uh, triaxial is mostly preferred because of the reduced volume but it has the uh, technical challenges 
in taking out the connections and making the end terminals. So all this, if you see, this is the winding process uh, for making a superconductor uh, tape. You can have a former, then you have a bunch of tapes which you are, will be putting in terms of helical. Okay. And this helical uh, cable can be then put into a former and you can lay it either underground or you can dig it uh, through the normal structures along the side of it. Now you can see there are three phases, R, Y, V, all been put together. So amount of space required to put this and to put this tower is a right, easily comparable. So we can save a lot of ROW path uh, across the length and breadth of our tunnel. Now coming to the major technical issues of this cable cooling. We have make, we are right now, we have discussed about uh, the electrically, how to make it, how to put the dielectric material. Now we need to cool it, okay, to below the temperature. For cooling, we need to check for its hydraulic diameter. We need to check about the cooling circuit. We also need to worry about the vacuum circuit. Then what should be the length after which the substation, cooling substation is required? What will be the thermal contraction? And what will happen to the end terminals joints? So these are the major thermal problems uh, uh, related issues for the SCS cable. So currently what they do is you have uh, the SCS terminal. Now through this terminal or through this bushing, you need to feed the liquid nitrogen also. And that liquid nitrogen will travel the other side where you will have again a cooling station which will recool it and again pass through it. Okay. So these are the different uh, photographs or the cooling stations uh, connected. This is only the cable uh, terminal part. Cooling uh, coolers are uh, located somewhere else. Now cooling can be done either through the using the cryo refrigerator. Uh, it can be a Breton type or is a Breton cycle type, Britain uh, cycle or Sterling cycle. Okay, in which you feed the liquid nitrogen, it goes entire the cable, it gets converted, it takes the heat of the superconductor and the hot stream is coming back and this buffer tank can store any pressure is built up and then it has been again pumped to the heat exchanger where it has been cooled by the cryo refrigerator. So this is one of the cycles. Another way is to use the uh, subcooled liquid nitrogen. So you have as a liquid nitrogen tank, you have passed into one of the cryostats and with the help of vacuum pump, what happens is you are creating a low pressure in this tank. So as the temperature decreases, uh, as the pressure decreases, the temperature decreases. Due to this, this uh, nitrogen in this tank will attain the subcooled temperature that is below 77 Kelvin. And when you pass the liquid nitrogen through a heat exchanger coil, the processed liquid nitrogen, it will again uh, get liquefied and transferred. So this is another closed loop circuit for the cooling the uh, superconductor cable. So these are the uh, more detailed sch schematics where you can have a liquid nitrogen plants across the world. Liquid nitrogen ch is cheap because of or low cost because of its uh, abundance in the atmosphere. So these are the plants which will directly extract the nitrogen from the atmosphere, liquefy it on the spot and circulate it. Okay. So now major challenge is now how to insulate these bushings and maintain the temperature. Because if you keep long length, there will be a larger heating leak. So there lies the optimization uh, or the, uh, for the current leaks. Okay. So that is the optimization problem. And if you see the major engineering challenges for developing any kind of superconductor cable is pulsive electrical losses. When you're operating it at an AC, you have the AC losses as well as the dielectric losses. Okay. You have the thermal losses due to the conduction and convection. You have the heating leak there. Then you're passing the fuel over the long length there's going to be a pressure drop and uh, the friction factor is going to play a major role. So the hydraulic diameter design and withstanding is going to play a role. If you increase the height, okay, to withstand the pressure. So the corresponding reinforcement has to be there. And uh, what should be the bending radius, fractures, 
allowances so these are the open areas in that uh, which has not been certified uh, like we have the pressure vessel standards or we have the ipl standards for the cables but as of now the standards for this kind of superconductor cables are still open okay both on mechanical side and electrical side so now coming to the glimpses of uh, india's first super uh, superconductor cable uh this uh, cable we are uh, manufacturing or we are uh, developing the prototype at iit kharagpur so we have finished the first phase of the project successfully and demonstrated it so in the first phase we had only this small section of 1 meter cable and uh, now uh, uh, in which 1 meter cable is uh, able to carry 1300 amperes at 10 volts and for the duration of 1 hour in the second phase we are having this extended 5 meter cable and this 5 meter cable will be joined with the 1 meter cable so we have the challenge of designing the joint box that how to join now you are not joining only to copper wire you have to join the copper wire you have to join the sts tapes you have to join the uh, liquid nitrogen space you have to join the vacuum space all these four things has to be joined making sure there is the minimum voltage drop across the joints otherwise there is a major chance that the quench will superconductor quench will occur and it will not be operating then we have the circulation system another challenge the end terminal how to make a electrical bushing such that you can feed the liquid nitrogen also and take out the gas from the other side and at the same time you are able to minimize the heat leak due to the copper rod and uh, how do you uh, maintain the voltage gradient with the help of this so these are some of the engineering drawings or uh, we have planned out for our project work so you can see it's a multi wall vessel where how you will put it these are the bushing rods you know, through which the current will be supplied and this is the, the dielectric uh, bushing for insulator which will be guarding the parasite now before we start uh, we need to characterize the tape so first thing what we did is that we started with the characterization of the super commercial superconductor tapes with us so in that we have developed uh, Our the cryogenic UTM machine. This is a homemade or indigenous made cryogenic UTM machine. We have modified the existing UTM machine, universal testing machine, into the cryogenic UTM machine, where we can mount our the sample in the liquid nitrogen bath. We can supply up to 200 amperes with our power supply, and we can also uh, provide a strain uh, with the help of this uh, crosshead uh, supporting structure. and we can pull it out we can measure the distance uh, with the help of lvdt okay and this facility we have uh, uh, developed to test and characterize superconductor tape so these are the uh, super this is a superconductor tape which has been soldered onto copper blocks this copper block is been housed inside this uh, cryogenic utm for testing purpose this is an open bath in which we can test and see at the room temperature another that was the dc ev characterization now we have the ac ev characterization so the setup is same but the power supply is changed to supply high amperes we can supply up to 1300 amperes to this but each uh, tape currently can take each sample of the tape can currently take up to 150 amperes okay so means if i have to supply 1300 amperes i need to have the stack of 12 to 14 uh, tapes together and this is the Electrical circuit of that. This is what is the IV characterization results of what both AC and DC we have. You can see there is a sudden rise in the voltage across the tape. So all this uh, voltage was measured in the four probe method, so that we can compute the resistance, eliminating the lead resistance. And for different uh, tapes, we have found different uh, types of characterization. and what we have found is they are having a different n factor n factor is nothing is the gradient of this slope the knee point gradient is known as the n factor okay and uh, higher the, the gradient sharper will be the characteristics of this 
So uh, this is what I was talking about the crosshead. So we have uh, this crosshead, uh, the sample being mounted inside this cryogenic UTM. We have another experiment uh, of a stress strain and we also tested in the torsion. That means you twist the tape at different angles and, and see what is the effect on the critical current. Now, what happens is if you are twisting the tape, we have found there's a drastic degradation in the critical current value. That means its operation has to be uh, characteristics will come down. So instead of 10 tapes, now you have to put more than 15 tapes. Now, we wanted to test our cryogenic uh, flow meters and other process equipments, but we have are having the problem of, of two phase. To eliminate that, uh, we uh, develop a subcooling system. So we use the method of a cryo bending to make a heat exchanger coil. And this uh, cryo bending has been uh, used to make this spiral kind of heat exchanger, which has been mounted in this uh, subcooling system in the cryo set. Okay. So uh, we have uh, liquid nitrogen field and then we have vacuum pump. So it will lower the temperature from 77K to 65K. And when the liquid nitrogen pass through this uh, subcool, it's a uh, temperature will, uh, will further cool down. Due to that, uh, we can will get only a single phase outside. And that's how we'll be calibrating our uh, cryogenic flow meter. Now this cryogenic flow meter is essential to measure the amount, how much amount, quantity of liquid nitrogen you are feeding in our table. At the same time, these are the cryogenic control walls to control the processes over this. And this is the complete instrumentation made on the lab view for uh, logging and controlling. Now I will show you a short video how it looks like to calibrate a cryogenic flow meter. So we have opened, my students opened the device and this is the cold vapor of a nitrogen is coming. So this white fume, uh, and nitrogen is colorless, this white fume is because of the H2O presence in the atmosphere. This is the cryogenic flow meter, and this is the cryogenic uh, control wall. You can see some frost formation. This is the insulated transfer lines, and this is the jet of liquid nitrogen coming. Okay, now, the, what is the challenge in uh, calibrating this? The challenge is, if you don't operate it properly, there's always a chance there will, this, uh, uh, there will be a frost formation on the turbine. And due to that, the turbine will stop uh, rotating. And that's the major reason you need to define a critical process parameters, how to operate it, what should be the operating procedure, which wall has to be operated under what conditions. That sequencing takes a challenging job. And that's why the role of cryogenic engineer come electrical engineer comes into action. These are the different uh, issues we have faced and the solutions we have found to our experiment. And this is the calibration graph. It took uh, nearly for us uh, to find this calibration almost two months to determine the exact process for that. Now we wanted to test uh, the dielectric strength at a uh, different temperatures. So we have developed uh, some setups. So this is to measure the dielectric strength uh, at a uh, room temperature as well as in the liquid nitrogen temperature. This setup is for, uh, uh, in this, uh, you have the two copper blocks uh, uh, and you are placing a dielectric materials and placing inside the liquid nitrogen temperature and measuring with the LCR meter, what is the uh, capacitance change. This capacitance change can be used for obtaining the dielectric variation. Similarly, the insulation resistance uh, variation can be check checked with the help of MIGA at uh, both in room temperature and liquid nitrogen temperature. Another important point is uh, required for any of the uh, cryogenic uh, the, or dielectric material is the breakdown strength. So to test the breakdown strength for the materials, we have developed a spark gap setup in which uh, this is a wooden piece supported by the support. And this has been kept both inside a vacuum chamber. So you can see there's a spark plasma formation in this. So we can use it uh, for uh, different temperatures to determine the strength, uh, breakdown strength of the our samples. This is uh, next is the this is the flow chart for the uh, determining. This is a simple or, or a broader overview of a single phase whole dielectric based power cable. Uh, the methods by which you, the steps if you follow to design different kinds of things. 
change. But this is not the thing. Or each uh, uh, block has internal block diagrams, which is very cumbersome. So with a shortage of time, I don't want to go into it as of now. But any question there, we can take on that. And this is the photograph of the first superconductor cable of India we have made. In the first superconductor, we have found the issues of frostings at the ends, but there's no frosting on the length of the cryostat. So that's a, one of the big achievements that we are able to handle the pressure. And this is a double wall. So you have a, a pressure of 10 to the power minus six bar in the outer, and whereas inside you have two bar of liquid nitrogen push through this liquid nitrogen gap. This is the power supply to which we are supplying. Woods connected over here. This is a, the inlet and this is the outlet of this. The liquid nitrogen which has been fed to this line is being collected outside. And all this, the temperature along this has been logged on this stream with the help of the instrumentation and the lab view program which we have done. Now in the, our next target is to extend this one meter to five meters and check its integrity for same voltage and currents. Coming to the conclusions, in a conventional cable or device where an electrical bushing and insulations are required, only the electrical bushing and insulations are required. Whereas in STS cable, you have to worry about the electrical bushing along with the passage of the cryogen and the entire system has to be insulated from the ambient using high vacuum system. This is a major challenge because we need fellows who are able to understand the dependency of this. The lack of knowledge in any of this will lead to catastrophic conditions. Therefore, any superconductor device operation requires knowledge of all three domains, science and technologies. India has started a superconducting power grid program, but to realize this cutting there as a technology indigenously, we need a skilled manpower for design an operation of STS cable, for which we require strong in academic as well as industrial collaborations for, with youngsters to take this challenge both in academic and field. So this is uh, the major uh, we are lagging, where we are finding is struggling with the uh, youngsters who are having the interest in, in this kind of multidisciplinary projects required. So if we can look into it, we can have a, a better future ahead. With that, thank you, everyone. Any questions? Over to Chairman. Sir, you switch off your uh, sharing the screen. Okay. So, Kumarajan, sir? Now you are unmute yourself and then uh, talk. Now, now it is possible. Yeah. <laughs> sir, uh, if any uh, few uh, clarifications on the topic of the time, then the presentation can start. Sir. Anybody have the clarification on the Sir, the felicitation is finished off, I think, and then I will start uh, question answers. Oh, okay, then uh, Dr. Abhi. I think already you talk about uh, this thing. So only uh, if anything about uh, secretary will talk or any other uh, where past chairman will. Uh... Yeah, yeah, there are that. Okay, okay. Okay. Engineer Anand, please uh, take. Ah, sir, uh, sir, now I request uh, Dr. S. Nirmalingam, former chairman, to give a facilitation about uh, IETLs, uh, MLC, sir. Sir, Dharmalingam, sir. Okay, good evening to all. Chairman, Tamil Nadu State Center, Chairman, Madurai Local Center, Secretary, Madurai Local Center, and our council member, Mr. Rajamani, and the, all the members from Madurai Local Center and Trichrapli Local Center. Once again, I would like to say a good evening to all of you. So I am delighted to extend my warm congratulations to Madurai Local Center on its 40th anniversary celebrations. And as we know, celebrations form an indispensable part of human life. It is an act of expressing veneration and admiration. Celebrations bring people closer. 
and achievements memorable so we are able to recollect what our achievements we have made over the last 40 years i recall the close associations i had with my some of our some of the earlier chairmen of madurai local center like mr nagalingam then mr manohan mani and uh, 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 yeah, immediate past chairman mr vijay kumar and also the current chairman mr raju gopal and also my close association with mr uh, uh, ramadas council member and also representing electrical engineering division board and also the secretary mr narayana sami from tlc we look forward to continuing our partnership with, with the madurai local center and wish the madurai local center every success in the years to come may madurai local center continue to flourish for all the times to come so uh, of course the trichrapalli local center is slightly older compared to madurai local center i think we have started 6 years earlier compared to madurai local center so as an elder brother we wish our younger brother uh, success in all the endeavor thank you thank you sir now i request engineer selvaraj past chairman ietlc to propose uh, some to, to give some presentation about uh, mlc sir yes sir good evening i am i am yadav bil sir yes sir yes sir yes sir thank you prospector engineer ramdas chairman ia tamil nadu state center engineer p raja dr raja mani sir past uh, vice president of ia engineer raju gopal fi chairman ia madurai local center sir narayan sami the present secretary sir vijay kumar past chairman sir samuel past honorary secretary and other past chairman past honorary secretaries committee members of madurai local center and engineer n subasubramanian former chief general manager of the senior scientist from isro and uh, engineer mahendra kothari iea electrical division board member from nasik and present chairman of iit is mr dr kumaresan past chairman present honorary secretary joint honorary secretaries committee members and our iea members invitees of today's webinar and today's speaker of dr abhay uh, singh jao assistant professor cryogenic engineering center iit kharagpur we are very very happy good evening to everyone Uh, today i am very happy to felicitate iia madurai local center for celebrating the 40th year that is on 197 they had a function the present the present president of iims narendra singh dr m n m gunaraja and sister kumar mein parts were and uh, you know, dr mohit sami anathray delivered a talk on engineering need and necessity of two dimensions engineer tm uh, just the highlights of about madurai local center is that is engineer team jambulingam consulting engineer philosopher guide is the mooted idea of establishing the madurai local center he was a founder chairman and engineer v satapan was the founder honorary secretary sub center was opened in the year 197 1980 then mayor muttu felicitated the function the sub center was delivered to the local center in the year 1986 the activities were they conduct regularly iim examinations regular lectures they conduct the all india seminar on the topic sethu samitram project and the building uh, foundation was uh, done on 9/11 1987 and 99 1999 the building was opened they won a lot, lot of awards that is special incentive for topping the growth rate all india level and the account submission awards and best local chair award in the 19 2015 16 and 2017 18 where i was also with, the, the, with them the congress the student chapters of mepco engineering college kl engineering college arasan uh, ganesan polytechnic got the best student chapter award similar jubilee was celebrated <coughs> in the year 1970 2005 a souvenir was also released here. what are the pay? they have a lot of facilities that we should also follow with the, the, the library with the reading hall about more than 20 70 books and rainwater harvest system with the 2 lakh liters water testing lab separate tanks for fire safety rainwater bore water and all Ten to water purifier for drinking and all, fire safety equipments, the chairman secretary room, and the discussion uh, hall, lecture hall. Really, the reason they opened uh, guest house with uh, two rooms by our uh, first president, Mr. Sushil Kumar Banerjee, and uh, they give a new birth to the new local center, Kanyamal Kanyamal local center, now now November 2015. Center has a website that is uh, also they release public uh, monthly connect G journal. in this uh, central area they are planning to organize an international seminar technology for green fire uh, green fire work that is holistic approach towards environmental challenges under the aegis of chemical engineering division board the council meeting they conducted kodaikanal the last year 
the credit of all success goes to the past chairman past founder secretaries committee members of the madurai local center i want to say two important happenings from iia tamil nadu states and this is our gunaraja iia was vice president in the year 2005 and 6 was elevated as president the previous year and our rajamani was elevated as vice president of iia in 2018 that is such the two people uh, will elevate uh, grant to the national level i wish many more people to come from tamil nadu to go to the central level that's what what do i observe from dr rajamani is he is a very good leader so uh, he is a thorough leader of i uh, bylaws and he is a thorough leader of all council minutes uh, and line by line and he takes it to the I, i was with him for many of the council meetings valid questions he raises he used tries in the council meetings very good relations with all india council members that is everyone used to express good respect to and honor to our dr t rajamani ready to help regarding ia any time any, act- any activities any support we approach you calm and quiet but assertive in raising issues concerning ia i learned a lot of good qualities direction from him even learning today many positive aspects from him he is a role model to all of our ia members very can sir the yani engineer earlier as engineer dm jambuli jam the founder chairman was elevated as a chairman of tamil nadu local center he contributed a lot for the center's growth another uh, important role model what the present chairman mr raju gopal engineer raju gopal present chairman madurai local center i have moved with him for the past two years in council meetings he is young energetic compared to all of us he is young i can say he is young energetic visionary capable of doing many activities of iia He has shared many positive attitudes and positive habits with me. I astonished the ways that he moved with us whenever we meet him. And I interacted with the engineer B. K. Vijay Kumar, the past chairman, MLC, who was my companion during council meetings. And he used to share many thoughts from him. He enjoyed and learned from many good things from him. And I also interacted with the engineer Samuel, past under secretary, present uh, secretary Mr. Narayan Swami. Uh, many, many of the meetings. I met them in so many times in many IAE meetings. IA engineering congress in various places they used to be very friendly jovial and extend the support whenever we talk them for any of our IA, IA, IA activities this is secret of success of madurai local center due to the volunteers office bearers committee members now members of the fast and present i wish uh, madurai local center office bearers of present uh, past and past for taking the center to this attitude <laughs> हेलो सर 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 आई क्लोज फोन सुन कट आयर से नहीं करना सर सर गुड ओके सर सो वील स्टार्ट फॉर क्वेश्चन आंसरिंग एनी अदर एनी अदर पर्सन इज सर यस सर इंजीनियर सामीदास आई थिंक ही वुड लाइक हां इले सर और वरला वरली हां हां वरला ओके ओके सर सर थैंक यू सर नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट आवर चेयरमैन टू गिव नेक्स्ट वीक लेक्चर डिटेल्स सर हां क्वेश्चन आंसरिंग आई डोंट नो Yeah, yeah. Questioning answer. Ah, yeah. proceed. Please any proceed. any doubts is there? Please unmute yourself and then ask the questions. Hello, Anand. Ah, yes, sir. Ah, uh, uh, hello. Yeah, please hello. proceed. Yeah, uh, hello. Uh, hi, Professor Abey. Uh, sir, sir, I am. Hello, ah uh, sir, please proceed sir. Please proceed with your question. Sir, Aramda sir, can you video like that? Can you band with that? Our mat audio cut out, cut out. Our mat. Sir, super super name sir. You ask some question sir. Yes yes please. Yeah. Good evening, uh, Doctor Abey 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 uh, from IIT Kharagpur. I'm mm-hmm. uh, Swas Brownie from uh, Isro. Earlier, IIT Kharagpur has helped to produce many scholars in the field of cryogenic engineering. Cryogenic engineering in our uh, center, in fact, which has helped uh, many people to complete their M.Tech as well as their doctorate. Uh, in this regard, uh, I, uh, Dr. Abhay Singh, I have only two questions. Uh, one is about the superconductor cables. Connecting between the joints, how it is proposed? Uh, any work has been done in this field? That is one thing. Second thing is uh, we are operating in the super cold conditions, uh, super cold state of 137 Kelvin, 
Uh, is there any development going on at uh, slightly near room temperature for the superconductive activities? I read somewhere some activities are being now it is being processed. Uh, IIT Karakpur is venturing upon this. And the third point is, uh, as you rightly said, there is a good uh, industry, academia, interaction is needed in this field, which is going to be the futuristic, futuristic activity. And uh, as uh, our earlier president, Dr. Abdul Kalam said, superconductors are the backbone for our Indian future energy sources, which he has mentioned earlier. So these are the three things which I wanted to make a, a, get a clarification from uh, Dr. Abhay Singh, a gout please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, for your first question, uh, that uh, superconductors are uh, basically we are, we are trying to work on the material uh, material aspect. Currently in India, people are uh, not working at IIT Kharagpur. IIC Bangalore has been involved for your room temperature superconductor. BRC, BRC also. Is really BRC, they are trying uh, to make uh, the low temperature itself right now. Uh, because uh, they still have not got the grip on the current uh, uh, low temperature air superconductors. But uh, they have come up with uh, some of the pellets for the su superconductor. In last uh, one of our conferences, they have shown uh, the superconductor uh, pellets. But uh, to re realize it to, from engineering to, uh, from uh, physics to the engineering, it uh, requires a lot of uh, modifications. Okay. People, what they do is uh, small samples of pellets. Okay, but uh, what we need for the engine purpose is a one kilometer length or 10 kilometers length. So that uh, transition is still, uh, we are lagging. And uh, I, as of now, I'm not aware that anybody is working on that side. NPL also. I have, uh, yeah, NPL. So they are working all on small things. I'm not saying they are not working, but uh, bringing it to the engineering level, the efforts are not there. And uh, second, Connectors. about the joining, yes. joining. Uh, sorry, uh, about, about the joint uh, for low temperature superconductors, people have worked uh, how to join it because uh, in low temperature superconductor, you can do the heat treatment. So joining is uh, fe feasible by welding and all those things, fusion. but in uh, with, uh, due to fusion. But uh, whereas uh, in high temperature superconductor, maximum allowed temperature for the sol soldering is uh, uh, 120 degrees centigrade. Okay, if you go beyond that, then the substrate material uh, becomes non superconducting. Okay, so the fusion, that's why it is a very important role how to join it. So, what people have done is uh, to make an overlap joints so that you have the extended surface. You can also crimp it and then apply the solvent material like indium material, which has a low boiling point. So that it can uh, melt and fuse it. India also we have very good conductor at low temperatures. That is there. Silver is also used sometimes for brazing, but silver melting temperature is pretty high. So it's not. You can yeah, take the indium foil and uh, squeeze it. So there are different procedures. But at the same time, when you, whenever you are making any joint, most important there is characterization. So you need to again test the IV characterization. So that for different temperatures, uh, there's uh, very less resistance is being formed. So this is the critical uh, problem, especially for the MRI magnets when you have the length of uh, uh, long length of uh, wire is required. You always need to join it. So jointing is a very critical thing and a very difficult process uh, for especially for high temperature superconductors. Do you have any support from your material science group? for the advanced development of these future uh, superconductors? Uh, no, sir. As of now, I don't have any collaboration uh, within... Uh, like in Neobium, Neobium or uh, LA, LA based this thing. Yes, sir. Neobium is there, but uh, actually we are working on high temperature. So Neobium will be used for low temperature superconductors, mm -hmm. which uh, we have already worked a long time back. Um, so the senior professor, they have worked it. But the cost of helium is what is hindering it for the power grid purpose. Okay, there because there is always a chance that helium will leak out and which will be very expensive as well as costly. And it's a crime basically to leak the helium out. No, so, we use it in satellite for the 
upper uh, interplanetary mission. Yes. I have calibrated. Yeah. yeah, I have calibrated your GSLV sensors, sir. Okay. All your flight uh, level sensors and temperature sensors were calibrated uh, during level the sensors. Achha. Yes. Uh, that, that, that means you have to use uh, liquid helium. Uh, we have used a liquid nitrogen for the level sensors and uh, liquid helium for uh, temperature sensors. Yeah, not only that, when you calibrate uh, hydrogen sensors. Yes. Hydrogen tank, when you want to see the level, yes. you have to check the hydrogen uh, level. Yes. So you have to use a uh, helium. That's why I am there. Yes. You can use it. Even uh, liquid nitrogen, you can use it. Then you have to change the dielectric constant for the changing the calibration equation. How about oh, the nano, nano science? Nano material science play a role in the superconductor development. So it's uh, having a mega role to play for the development of the superconducting tape. Because uh, all these uh, the techniques were of manufacturing of superconducting tape I have shown you uh, deals with the deposition, how to deposit. Okay, but here the, it's not a batch process. Most of the uh, semiconductor which you deposit is the batch process. You insert one thing, it will get deposited and all thing. But this is a continuous process. You have a one kilometer length to be coated uniformly and keeping the vacuum condition same keeping the sputtering condition same or laser condition same, which is a very challenging job in itself. And also edgy preparation of the cables, protectors. Yes. So the, yes, just to uh, give you a note, uh, the company from which we have purchased the tape, they have uh, the strength of some 45 pupil. Out of that, 35 employees are PhDs right. to operate all the machines. You said for the uh, first, you said multi talented people required. Yes, 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 okay. And our main aim is how to reduce the loss. Now, you put a gap of two percent loss, two percent loss for the IV curve. IV curve, we have put a two percent loss, yes, sir. Whether, whether our Indian goal for futuristic mission, how it should be brought down to around one or less than 0.5, something like that. That was the goal set by our visionaries in the superconducting field development. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, there, uh, sir, we, uh, as an engineer, so I'm currently dependent upon the material, right? So uh, means I have my limitations. So my li limit starts once the material arrives and how to engineer it and how to couple it. That's where my domain lies. Uh, but uh, I truly, uh, but whenever, as and when, whenever we get a material, we are always ready to put with this kind of technology. So far, it is uh, relevant to liquid nitrogen or something. Okay. So we uh, currently my approach is to make the means uh, due to my multidisciplinary experience of last uh, sixteen years. Uh, what I have found is uh, that integrating we are facing a problem due to ego or whatever issues in integration of the technologies. Okay, so we need a single handed person who knows all, all the domains, then only the integration is easy or easy. feasible to, uh, uh, to do it both diplomatically, politically, or technically. They call a multi flexi knowledgeable person for this field, like a semiconductor right. field. Good work is done at IIT Karakpur. I thank and I, I, yes, I hope you we promote some more uh, so, some more uh, space engineers to be mastered in the uh, cryogenic field. Uh, some more people are opting for uh, doing doctorate and MTech and other things. I hope you will encourage such uh, attempts. Sure, sir. We are, our, uh, we are open by heart and to all the ISTRO scientists and BHL employees for uh, taking in India further. Good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So, calling in, sir. We have, I think, some Wait, questions. Uh, yeah, I have a few questions on the overview of the subject. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Hey, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Can you repeat, sir? Good evening, Mr. Abai. Good lecture. I have one question. The You mentioned about the cooling substations needed for the transmission line. If you introduce this cable, uh, I want to know what will be the distance between the substations, uh, cooling substations you may need uh, for a uh, say 100 kilometer or 200 kilometer of cable. 
transmission. Right. So, uh, good evening, sir. Uh, evening. Thank you for your question. Uh, the currently, we are, actually, the maximum length of, of wire which can be exactly manufactured till date is just one kilometer for high temperature superconductor across the world. Okay. So that's why the length of uh, the cable is limited to 600 meters or 500 meters. Okay. So people have used uh, two to three, uh, uh, every 200 or 300 meters, they have currently used it. But this can always be increased. The distance between the two subcooler can always be increased by using the uh, different uh, uh, lower or subcooled uh, liquid nitrogen systems. Okay. So we, uh, when we are planning to launch into the site, we expect uh, at least one cooler for every 10 kilometers. That should be the target for uh, uh, the feasible use of this kind of uh, technology. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Shabai Singh, good evening, Dharmalingam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate that you are working in an high tech area. Initially, in the presentation, you have indicated that the superconductor exhibits zero resistivity for DC and for AC, of course, it offers some resistance. Yes, sir. But presently, you are working on the AC lines. Yes, but sir. In India, we are having high voltage DC transmission. In the few locations, we are having high voltage DC transmission. Why we are selected to work in AC rather than high voltage DC transmission? So we have tested our cable both for AC and DC. Okay, any difference you have noted? So the difference is only in terms of uh, the IV characterization, which I have shown. You can see for the AC, uh, the rise uh, of a voltage across the tape is faster at uh, at lower temperature, uh, lower current itself, as compared to that of the DC. Okay, so that means there is a certain more voltage drop. You can see in terms of AC. Okay. Now. Uh, this losses uh, will be due to the eddy current losses on the because of the surface of the uh, superconductor. Okay. Okay, which is uh, unavoidable for the frequency. Now uh, there are chances, sir. So where we can use this? This is very expensive cable. Each uh, one per meter will cost you around close to seven to eight thousand rupees. So uh, what uh, one should do is it can be used for the grid integration. For example, you have. Uh, solar power plant. Okay. okay. So solar power plant already generates the DC. So there you, you can supply, uh, you can use it for interconnection with the grid, the superconductor cable, so that there is no power loss with the help of uh, whatever we are generating with the solar grid. Okay. Same thing is with the wind farms. So wind farms, you are generating it and you are rectifying it. Okay. okay. So that, uh, the harmonics can be eliminated. So once it has been rectified, that uh, uh, rectified power can be transmitted again over this uh, superconductor cable. And when and where the load is required or the grid is, uh, substation is there, then it can be converted with the help of power converters into sine wave. OK. There is one more question. Presently, uh, you have indicated that the share from thermal power plants is higher in India. Right, sir. OK. However, our share with respect to renewable energy is increasing. By the year 2030, the share from renewable energy in India is likely to be around 40%. And by, to, by the year 2050, as per the report given by Terry, the share by renewable will be about 90%. One is renewable uh, contribution is increasing, and other one is we are going for distributed power systems, distributed power generations. So we generate in a particular yes. location and we use it in the, in the nearby locations itself. In that context, what is the relevance of uh, this technology in the coming years? Because I'm not going, I, I may not be going for transmission over longer distances. So yes. in that context, how these developments will be useful in India? So uh, if you uh, see the, the renewable energy, for example, solar, it generates DC, whereas the wind generates a sign or a harmonic uh, waveform. Okay, now how, to, but all your appliances are designed to operate on a particular frequency and voltage. Now, how to integrate all these uh, different uh, voltages and phases onto a single grid? You need to bring it 
to the same uh, DC level and then convert it to AC with the help of power converter. The transmission loss between these devices or the, the power generation to a load can be minimized with the help of this kind of superconducting uh, cable because for DC, it offers zero resistance. And it's, as the frequency is zero, you don't have the inductance effect. So you can always uh, have a much better efficiency of transmission with minimal loss at the joints and junctions. Okay, that is for the joints and the junctions, basically. Because sir, the, that will be operated with a copper, uh, because superconductor will cannot be brought to the room temperature. Okay. okay. So that or uh, whatever uh, losses you will be having will be uh, occurring at the joints as well as at the end terminals. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, actually, one one more question in the chat box from Joe Win. That question is regarding uh, cryogenic transmission line cooling. Does this require intermediate pumping station for cooling cryogen other than power generation site and the receiver end? This is a question. Uh, yes, uh, definitely it requires, if you are having a longer distance transmission line, you definitely need to have the uh, uh, this kind of uh, turbines uh, which will the uh, uh, cooling substations it will help in uh, uh, cooling uh, the entire table over the land. Now, now it's an open research area in this area that how to optimize the number of coolers, what should be the efficiency of the coolers, how many coolers to be used. So it's uh, one of the open first areas for the research topic. Uh, so uh, some of the researchers are working on that, but uh, I'm not the right person to answer more in detail on this. But definitely it's uh, required. This uh, has to be optimized uh, to, to, to cost of, uh, it impacts the cost of the operation. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Sir, uh, good evening, sir. Abhay, sir. It was a very good, wonderful presentation, sir. I uh, have a question with me. That is, uh, this type of uh, this superconductor based power cable. Right now, you are manufacturer or you are some supplier, sir, sir? Anybody, sir? Sir, uh, uh, I have a superconductor tape purchased uh, from Korea and uh, other countries. Okay. And with the help of tapes, we are making the cable by, by our own hands. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, our request chairman to give details about next week lecture. Yeah. Uh, Rajamani, sir. Rajamani, sir, you uh, just. Uh... Our sir, tomorrow, again, sir. Uh, tomorrow, we will have lecture from Hosur Local Center, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So, only one lecture tomorrow. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, sir, I request uh, all the, all the uh, local center to support and participate hmm. okay 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 sir thank you so sir we'll, we'll move to the vote of thanks by narayan sami secretary madurai local center sir okay yes, so next week i think we have that uh, ah you announced that your program the light is an echo of your inner self speaker is mr vijay kapoor darbe clothing asia it's on 28 7 2020 at 6 15 pm Request okay. all are cordially invited to participate and attend the lecture. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, before moving to formal vote of times, I request uh, our joint secretary, Dr. Sienso uh, Kumaran, to give some feedback about our lecture, sir. Sir, uh, uh, good evening, uh, everybody. So, first of all, I like to place my sincere thanks to my student, Dr. Abhay Singh, who work on the core area of research. And it was uh, quite interesting that uh, uh, he is having the state of art facility in the country. Uh, so I hope uh, many researchers would join his team and do uh, good service to our country. So once again, I'd like to thank uh, the opportunity given by the uh, uh, Chairman IATNSC and the Chairman um, TLC, IATLC, Tirchrapani, uh, past Chairman Chilrajar and uh, other members for uh, uh, actively involved and also the chairman from Tanjaur uh, local center and uh, Madre, uh, Madre Dr. Local. Subhati, who is also supposed to be the uh, student. And uh, I hope uh, this, uh, constructive lectures would uh, make 
more challenging and uh, uh, that would enrich the knowledge and skills of everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now I request uh, Mr. Narayan Sami, uh, Secretary M MLC, to propose order of thanks, sir. Good evening to one and all, sir. Respect our <laughs> respect our chairman, Mr. Rajabal, sir. Respect our Tamil Nadu chairman, State Center chairman, Dr. Amin, Engineer Ramdas, sir. Our council member, Dr. Rajamani, sir. And the Tichy chairman, Mr. Kumarasan, sir. And our chief guest, Abhay Singh Gau, sir. And all the members who have participated on this webinar. Abhay Singh Gau, sir, he has given the very good presentation regarding the superconductor basic power cables. It's a, in case it's a new technology in the, in the field of electricity, and he has given the, he has given the difference between the existing cable as well as the superconductor cable, how it has to be worked on that one, as well as the questions, part of the questions raised by the, our Dr. Sir Subramanian, Salu Raj, everyone he has given the, I mean, satisfied level answer, sir. And once of all, once again, I thank to everyone who has up, attended this webinar meetings for the event of 40th anniversary of Madhuri Local Center. Tomorrow, there's a meeting at six o'clock by the Hosu Local Center by Dr. T. Menaka Devi, Chairman, Institute of Engineers India, Hosu Local Center. The topic is AMNET and the applications. So everyone, here the, please join for the meetings. Thank you, Salat. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks sir, for the opportunity for the talk. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.